Charlie, it's great to see you. Thanks so much for really the time to uh, spend together. I uh, I remember the work we did together in our previous companies when I was at VMware and your previous gig. And you always are very partner friendly and very customer driven. And I called you at the time I joined Cohesia CEO. And we had some early thoughts about what we want to do, which were customer driven because of, uh, you know, our customers asking us to integrate with your security portfolio. So I'd like to talk to you about all the things you're doing. So maybe starting there, because you've got a broad portfolio and a big vision. Maybe give us a sense of what your vision is for security, why you took this role, mm -hmm. and what you're trying to change, uh, you know, in terms of the landscape of how security will play out. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, you know, it kind of started uh, a little over a year and a half ago. Actually, more than that. It was the beginning of uh, 21. Uh, when Jeff stepped down from Amazon, I started thinking about like, what are the big problems in the world? And the one that hit me was the security problem. Uh, it's, it's huge and growing. Um, and, and the more I thought about it, the more I realized like it was a, first of all, it was, it was going to be solved by the community. It, it's a community problem. You know, when we think about the bad actors, you know, the advantage we have is there's more of us and we have more data than they do. Uh, but we talk a lot about asymmetry of the attacker. The problem is they get to come at any point uh, and concentrate, and they get to explore uh, without us necessarily knowing, and then they come in and we have to react. And so I thought, wow, you know, there's this great opportunity for um, kind of thinking end-to-end -end about the problem. So uh, there's a lot of advantage in the cloud, a lot of things we can do to bring things together. Uh, we have to recognize that people are still largely on-premise and they have their own stuff that they have to protect. It's a hybrid world. Um, uh, the other thing I observed, it's it's going to be a multi-cloud world. So, uh, you know, customers are going to make choices. They're going to choose different things. Uh, and so I thought long and hard about, well, where, if I was going to make an impact in this area, where would that likely happen? And um, what hit me was Microsoft, because Microsoft has a long history, first of all, of um, of being able to lead a community. Like the Microsoft, I you know, my startup, uh, the way I got to Amazon actually was through a startup. Um, we were a Microsoft partner. I'd, I'd actually been at Oracle, uh, but we looked around the landscape. This was, oh gosh, 25 years ago. And we said, well, what company in their DNA understands that um, it's a community that's going to go work on a problem? And, and Microsoft was great at that. And so, uh, and so I, I decided to, to come here and, uh, and try, to, try to work on this problem. It's, um, you know, it's really exciting. There's a lot we can do to change the asymmetry of the attacker. Uh, we're in a world of AI and data, and data is a huge part of it. Uh, we can understand what we have and and do a better job of protecting it. And and because we can finally apply technology to uh, uh, looking across everything we have and and taking action through AI, I think we're going to be able to turn the corner on this thing. That's great. Well, you've uh, just kind of come fresh off the last few days your Microsoft Secure announcements. And maybe we thought we could, I could go a little, you know, drop down a level from that vision to what you just recently announced. It sounded like a very good refresh of the entire portfolio. The vision, there was also good AI and co-pilot. Maybe give us a little bit of a, you know, a, a, a few minute or two of what were some of the highlights of that announcement from just this past week? Mm -hmm. Well, as I said, um, the problem is kind of an end-to-end -end problem. Yeah. And uh, you, you, you look at the landscape, you know, uh, historically, we've sort of siloed what we do uh, to both proactively prevent problems and and react to uh, attacks, we've we kind of look at you know network security and identity and you know we look at endpoint uh, protection and and we we try to get across for uh, posture we try to get across it with data security and and compliance and um, systems uh, configuration and everything else and um, as we try to piece that together, we silo everything to the point where we can't understand what's going on inside. Um, AI changes that. Uh, what we've been able to do with large language models, um, actually the tiering of large language, so it's not like there's one model. You start with um, something like you've seen with uh, Chad GPT, but you can work on custom applications of, of large language models to uh, various things you do inside. And by bringing this all together, you can look across the landscape and you can bring together all of the pieces of the puzzle. So we bring together data security, network security, um, all of the XDR, detection, response, um, posture, being able to see how we're set up. Uh, and, uh, and AI really is, uh, is, is going to be the opportunity to change the, change the game here. And so we're really excited about Security Copilot. It's, we see it as an opportunity, um, not just for Microsoft to bring solutions to bear, 
Um, but it's going to be an opportunity for everybody because this this gives the if you're a defender this gives you the ability to go to a place and ask questions about and by the way there's another side of this that's super important we don't have enough skills in the industry so one of the reasons we haven't made as much traction as we should on the protection side uh, we can't hire enough people to do this uh, we have these arcane uh, multi-year ramps for people to be able to understand how to apply security to an environment it takes so long to bring a professional up to speed and be able to do this. But with something like Security Copilot, uh, you can take people and bring them in and they can actually use this tool to learn. So it teaches them about right. security. So it'll actually solve some, we have like a 3 million uh, job gap every year in, in the security industry and we can start to close that gap. I'd encourage people definitely watch the Copilot and the security launch. One question about Copilot, when I saw it, it wasn't just generating text, it was also generating diagrams and flow charts. Mm -hmm. Are those also AI generated? Yes. Yes, amazing. It, 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 because it can understand, this is the part I think that isn't, you know, you play with it online and you have it, you know, maybe write you a poem or something. Yeah. Um, but what you don't understand is how it can actually uh, follow system atoms yeah. and assemble them and then actually make queries and pull data in and do things with, with underneath, with things underneath. It's um it's actually pretty amazing in, in, in what what its capability. Very are. special. And I like the emphasis that you made several times in that presentation that it's your data, the customers. Yeah. This isn't some farming out the internet. You're basically providing them insight into their data. They get to do it in their world. Uh, so it really kind of takes away many of these sort of privacy and other kind of concerns. That, that is one of the key things is you know, think about data security and protection of the data and segmentation of what's accessed. Um, you know, one of the ways we solve this, this problem is we get the basics done. We get things like least privilege in the environment where, you know, the only the people that need to have access to something have access to it. And that flows through into our uh, AI models too. Only the things they should have access to, they have access to. Well, let's kind of dive you a good segue to data security. And our world of data security is very much driven by the fear and concern about ransomware. Mm -hmm. There's 20 ransomware attacks or attempts every second. That's a lot. Not all of them are successful, but many organizations I talk to, CEOs, CIOs, CISOs, and even their boards and audit committees are kind of worried about a black swan event where they get attacked and they have to recover. And sometimes because it's so pervasive or they don't have a recovery plan. Um, so this is a major threat, um, often nation state actors. What's your perspective on how we better fight to this? Some of this we're obviously doing together um, on, on the ransomware threat. Well, you, you outlined the threat uh, very well, Sanjay. The, the, um, you know, the problem is, uh, you, you know, you start with uh, literally corporations that are doing this. Um, I, I remember seeing one report, somebody had hacked into one of the ransomware providers and got a hold of their HR department, got a hold of the HR data, found uh, that they had all the normal corporate systems for hiring people to do the evil stuff. And they even had a, an employee of the month. Um, so, uh, so it's really well organized. It's actually an, an industry that's been segmented. There are provi platform providers, like there are cloud providers on the good side. There are cloud providers and uh, providing various capabilities to these uh, ransomware uh, actors. And so there's a commercialization of this uh, that we should be very worried about. And also nation states. Um, certain nation states uh, use this as a, as a revenue generator uh, for them. So, um, so the problem is, is large and well organized. Um, we see it. Uh, we see the pain with customers because we do incident response. So, um, in addition to all of the things Microsoft does to build security into the products and and provide security products, uh, we also uh, help customers when they when they have problems. And and in the incident responses, uh, over and over, we see these terribly heart wrenching stories. A company isn't ready. Uh, they have a ransomware event, and suddenly they're facing. Oh my gosh! You know, I am shut down, and I I either have to pay the ransom. I don't even know. I mean, some of these actors aren't even uh, honoring the, the payment. They get the payment and they, you know, do something else. And extortion is part of the game. And um, it's just heartrending to see what they go through uh, in this space. So there's, there's a lot we're going to have to do, I think, um, uh, as, um, as providers and, and, and for our customers. There's a lot they need to do uh, to get ready for this. And one of those starting points is often the last uh, defense is a, is a data protection and a backup strategy. So we began our effort around, okay, that's what we do really well, mm -hmm. the best technology of any player on the planet. How do we then build that kind of closer with, with Microsoft? We picked a couple of different tools. So, you know, obviously Sentinel was one and, and, and uh, you know, Purview and obviously Azure AD now Entra. 
we are kind of building that out. Um, so when you think about how a company like ours could partner with the best capabilities um, of what Microsoft's bringing in, the breadth of your portfolio, what advice do you have to partners like us how we can best get the breadth of your portfolio? Because it's going to take a village for us to win, right? It's not going to be just one company that's able to do all in security. Absolutely. Yeah, Vasu, uh, who heads up our, our CSA, our, our customer solutions um, uh, security offerings, has said this many times that, you know, it's uh, it's a village that's going to solve this and it's an end to end problem. And I think I love what you guys have done. I mean, um, you know, certainly the integration with Sentinel, you know, it helps uh, to have kind of one place where you can get the signal and you can understand what's going on and then you can take action. Um, but customers have to have backups. Like this is the thing we see over and over in these incidents is the customer, um, be because they didn't have a place that they put their data that was separate from what the the uh, rans ransomware actor had access to, um, they have no way to recover. And when they have no way to recover, um, you know, there's no guarantee that that even payment will get them out of it. And so, um, so that kind of the 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 data security and posture, you know, being able to know your 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 situation. Where where is your data? Where is it being accessed? Where is it can it be accessed? Um, and understanding that you have it uh, covered, you have it backed up. Um, you know that that part of the relationship, Sanjay, is so important. And um, I, I'm I'm really looking forward to the day. When one day we go into a, an environment, what we're really doing is we're just activating all of the knobs with you on uh, on how to get a customer recovered, rather than um, you know telling the customer, yeah, I, I don't know what we're going to do here. We don't have a we don't have a backup. Yeah. Well, so what we did when we um, kind of when I first talked to you six seven months ago when I joined the company, and you gave me an outline of all the different products you were working on, and you were very gracious to point me to your key leads. We went to work with those people over the course of the last six, seven months, and in very six, fast six, seven months, has struck up a partnership that we will be announcing, which we're super excited about. So I, I'll outline a few of those, because you know often the Security Operations Control Center is not us, it's you guys, or similar types of tools. So the feed from Sentinel is very important. That was the starting point. That was the first place we felt world-class integration allowed us to allow, if you're seeing some kind of threat, we need to make sure that that's fed into all the things we're doing with threat scanning on data. Because think of us as this sort of secondary data below the iceberg. Your primary data may be okay, but then if your secondary data has got sleeper cell malware, we want to know those feeds coming from you. Then, you know, obviously we'd already done a bunch of work with Azure AD and Hunter to make sure multi-factor authentication. That's really important to us. Important. And everything you're doing that we'd already been doing, we kind of enhance that. Uh, we had OEM'd a, a really world-class tool for classification uh, called Big ID. That's already a partner of yours, and they integrate some with Purview. So Purview's also uh, on the radar. And then we've been working with Kelly Bissell um, and his team on kind of plans for how the services piece of it, because a lot of this also takes into account the skill set uh, that we need. But I'll tell you the part I've been most excited about most recently. When I saw some of your new work around OpenAI and AI that came out the last few months when you know Satya did that demo. I went back to our team and said, we should apply that now to this. So we called not just your team, but Eric Boyd and mm -hmm. uh, Scott Guthrie's team. And we will be showing at this launch the ability to be able to do open AI chat GPT type capabilities on backup day, which has never been done before. Mm -hmm. So I'm like bubbling or excitement with that piece of it because there's an AI element that applies to you folks in security, but there's also an AI element that's never been done to second rate by backups so that we will be the first to do and we couldn't be more honored to be doing this with uh, your tech. Uh, so maybe your vision, a little bit of AI, because so much of what you're doing in security is AI related mm -hmm. and a good part of what you were announcing this past week. What are some of the ways in which AI will help what you're doing in security? Well, what you just outlined, it, it, it shows the, the potential. Like, because uh, we, can, we can now, AI is now smart enough. You know, it's not generally intelligent, it's not human. And by the way, that's why we call it a co-pilot. Um, you know, one of the key things here is it's not going to replace the humans in this thing. It's just going to make them incredibly powerful. But we can now make them powerful in the system space. You know, it's um, it, it's going to be a great accelerator for business productivity, for, you know, the tasks we do every day. But it's going to be able to extend into the system space, enable uh, humans to deal with things they could never deal with before. There's so much complexity down there. You know, having dealt with cloud for a very long time, I understand like the surface area in in the in the systems world in data in how you manage it in the systems that operate on it is so complex that having an ai 
trained on uh, backups on 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 the environment that's underneath. And the thing about AI that's fascinating: um, these large models you can see across a tremendous amount of data. You know, we um, we generate. Uh, I think it's now 65 trillion yeah, signals a day. Stat. I don't know if you heard that stat at the launch. I mean, incredible. Um, it, that's a huge amount of data coming in. And and historically, um, the ability to to deal with that and to make it useful, it hasn't been there. But with AI, we get to do that. And again, that's the that's going to change the asymmetry yeah. problem because we have more data. Yeah. Um, you know, they get to see the surface. We have all of it. Well, let me kind of just close by thanking you uh, Charlie, I remember my first time I met you many years ago in your previous uh, company, and then just the first call I made to you uh, six, seven months ago and told you, listen, we're going to be now multi-clouding our Ising, if I can use that verb, our architecture. We built the data plane now to Azure. But you said companies like you that are multi-cloud are a great starting point with security. We did that. You opened up your team, um, just your friendliness, not just to partners, but also to customers. Um, I've, you know, seen how you work with customers. I look forward to getting many joint customers successful our solutions. You are very customer intimate. That customer obsession, I think, bodes really well for not just a larger company like Microsoft, but also a mid-sized company like Coristi. So, uh, deep appreciation for the partnership. And for anybody watching this, get Charlie involved in your the customer conversations. He's the real deal. He's enormously uh, talented and, and knowledgeable about all things tech, but now also security. So appreciate the partnership. Thank you for this time. Well, I'm really flattered uh, um, and I'm very happy to be working with such a customer-focused partner. So, excellent. Thanks.